Mitzi Miller. Um, I started the volunteer group uh, Citizen Action for Sidewalks in Yellow Springs a year ago. We started off with uh, a large project on um, Dayton Street. Uh, we cleared um, sidewalks for residents with their permission and the hope was to make our sidewalks more accessible to all residents of Yellow Springs and their guests. This has been an ongoing project um, that I'm really proud of and uh, the volunteer groups that, who, that have participated in this uh, group as well. Uh, it started for me uh, when my elderly mom lived with me and was using a walker and uh, we couldn't use our sidewalks. I had to walk with her on the street because there was so much debris and overgrowth of limbs and branches. Uh, it wasn't safe for her to use the sidewalks. In 2021, I also had a knee replacement and uh, was using a walker my first couple weeks and would walk around the block and again I could not use sidewalks safely uh, due to the amount of branches that were overhanging, uh, grass overgrowth, sticks and dirt and uh, leaves all impacted safe travel for myself. That was my initiative to get started. And uh, I'm hoping uh, that uh, people have seen the difference in our sidewalks and will continue working on to improve the sidewalks in Yellow Springs. Thank you. I'm Carolyn Mullen. I'm the executive director of the Yellow Springs Senior Center. And I would like to share some thoughts about how uh, sidewalks and other ways of getting around in town are affecting seniors. We recently did a survey, which was uh, 110 respondents of the village that told us that to get to the senior center, over half of them are walking. So it's something we're really proud of. We're right in the middle of downtown. That means all of those folks are also walking to the shops downtown or able to get around walking. That's an incredible statement about the health of our community. So we have, uh, our senior center is located right in the middle of downtown. We have several businesses around us who have learned to be pretty cautious about leaving the walkway clear. It's something we advocate for quite a lot. We've got people coming in walkers, people obviously in wheelchairs and often people with bikes that need to have clear passage. So um, we are always aiming to make the safest encounter for people that are coming to the center. Uh, one of the wonderful successes of that is that we are also watchful of things like ice rather than just uneven sidewalks. Um, the village did help us with a drain to take away an ice hazard we had in front of the building. So we've been pleased that we've removed a hazard by identifying it. What happens so often is that folks aren't thinking about how their own space, where the, where the sidewalk is at their home, affects the people that are walking or pushing a stroller. So it's not just the uneven sidewalk you're looking for. It's the branches, it's the debris left on the walkway, all of those things have become a bit of a problem um, when we've got people that walk into branches they've had falls so keep an eye out for things like that for our seniors we have a remarkably large population of seniors in yellow springs we have about 32 percent of our population that is above the age of 65 that's double the state average so we've got to keep everybody moving. We've got to keep everybody active. There's so many health benefits to walking. Some of the benefits of walking include uh, delaying dementia, delaying cancer, uh, delaying cardiac disease. It's obviously good for all of our physical health in terms of 
osteo health and muscle health. And it's also a tremendous way to fall, prevent falls. Um, there, I went tripping over my words. It's a wonderful way to uh, build up the strength so that you can recover also if you do have a fall. I myself had a fall a few years ago. It was my own sidewalk at home. I didn't know about an ice hazard. We all can have falls anytime, but whatever we can do to help each other out means somebody else is gonna be better off in the long run. Hi everyone, this is Mayor Pam here coming to you with a very important message. I'm a walker around the village. I'm a cyclist, but we're here today to talk about sidewalks on behalf of the Yellow Springs Citizens Action for Sidewalks. I can't take my bike on the sidewalk, but I can walk on the sidewalk. And it's very important to me in navigating around the village that we have safe, walkable, safe streets, safe sidewalks, and this project fits that bill perfectly. We have a wonderful group of volunteers here in the village who have taken on the task of keeping our sidewalks fully exposed, free of dirt, clutter, leaves, grass that grows over the edge. In other words, we want to take full advantage of our sidewalks so that walkers like me, folks with differing abilities, mothers and fathers accompanying their young children to school, can safely hold hands, walk to a breast, maneuver the walker, wield a wheelchair, walk the bicycle as we head down the streets safely. We're a walkable community. That's part of our village values. So what we want to do is improve our community, always on the outlook for community, improving, making better, making safer, and this action group is doing just that, Yellow Springs Citizens Action for Sidewalks. Now what does this mean logically, theoretically, um, as far as ordinances are concerned? There is an ordinance that we keep our sidewalks free of ice and snow in the winter. That makes sense. We have 24 hours to clear our sidewalks. Most of us do this. There is an argument that can be made of, well, if it's, it's a heavy snow, sometimes it's more helpful to leave the, the snow alone and let people walk on top of it as opposed to skimming it off, creating a sheen, and making it icier. You can be the judge of that in front of your own residence. However, nothing is really said about keeping the sidewalks free of grass, accumulated litter, and so forth. And this is what the Yellow Springs Citizens Action for Sidewalks is doing, is bringing this to everyone's attention. Most of our sidewalks in the village are anywhere from 36 inches to four feet wide. Grass has a tendency to sometimes creep and start growing over the sidewalks, thus shrinking them. What we're asking you to do, if you have a sidewalk in front of or beside your house, Let's go out there with a scraper, a thin shovel, and just peel that off. It's like, it's like peeling off a bad toupee. Once you get it started, it usually rips right off, or you take a sharp knife and so forth. Clear it off to its fullest width. Also, make sure your sidewalk isn't blocked by overhanging branches, flowers, tree limbs, and so forth. What I like to do in front of my house is pretend I have an eight foot tall plexiglass shield on both sides of the sidewalk going straight up four foot width. I have one of those brand new sidewalks put in by the Safe Rides to School folks a couple years ago. It's great. Four foot width, eight foot height going up. Keep the branches, the plants, the encroaching weeds and grass off the sidewalk. It's a wonderful group of volunteers. I've been out with them two or three times, helping to clear the sidewalks. Yellow Springs Citizens Action for Sidewalks. If you're an elder or someone differently abled and you'd love to have a clear sidewalk, but you can't get out there and do it yourself for whatever reason, there's going to be a phone number 
a name you can call, someone that will come over and help you. We'll send someone over. Thanks for listening. So my name is Dorothy Bouquet. I'm a parent of two children. Right now they are five and nine, and I'm also a villager. Uh, when my daughter was three and my youngest was six weeks old, my daughter broke her leg and I needed to transport them. We, didn't, we only had one car for a family. My spouse was taking the car to go to work and the only mean of transportation for me at that point was to use a double stroller. And I had to go half a mile to get to uh, Tom's and I had to use what was available in infrastructures and for for that half a mile distance there was no sidewalk for about half of it and then there were sidewalks on which i could not navigate because they were either in poor shape or they were uh, there was obstructions with bushes and other vegetation um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just remember that specific <laughs> part where I had the double stroller. I was a postpartum mom, <laughs> had a six weeks old that was not supposed to be in a stroller like this, and a, four, a, a three and a half year old with a cast from the hip down. And I had to choose between being on the road with a stroller or a to pick them up by hand and move them around that specific bend of the road where the, the sidewalk was not navigable. So I know that since then the village has done a lot of strides into grinding down the, uh, the, the gaps between uh, sidewalks sections and that has, very, has been very helpful. Uh, I know also that since then we've had new sidewalks um, brought in by the Safe Routes to School program on winter and I would have used that if it had been in place then but it was before that program. So I know that keeping sidewalks clear is very important for the transportation and active transportation of really all people in town um, no matter the age and the ability but I know that it's even more important for the people that have limited mobility maybe temporarily or permanently. And I really hope that we advocate for more sidewalks because we still have many parts of towns that don't have a safe way uh, to, for children, for parents, for people on various uh, devices to navigate safely into town. And um, nowadays, as a parent of a five and nine year old, we use our bicycles. Uh, we also walk, depending on the weather. Um, and I know that my children are really craving the independence to run ahead. And that is really possible when we have safe sidewalks. It's not possible when we don't. Um, I live on Polcat Road, where we have really cars and vehicles that come at high speed. And we have to walk on private property. We walk on people's yards because there's really no way for us, or for me as a parent to let my kids run ahead of me and making sure that they have not get, get hit by cars. So advocating for the maintenance of our sidewalks is very important. I think also understanding the burden um, or the small steps that homeowners can take to maximize the use of sidewalks is incredible. But also asking if we can get more because we could use more. Hi, I'm Corey Elliott and I am a resident here in Yellow Springs. Um, I use a power chair because of a neuromuscular disease um, and uh, it's really important for me to be able to get around town um, and I think some of the things that impact that are um, when people park on the sidewalks. Um, on the way over here actually I had a Miller Lite truck, a mulch truck, and a car that pulled up and parked just right in front of me. Um, that can be really challenging because I often have to go back, get off into the streets, go all the way around and then um, get back on and that's a little bit scary for me. Um, so it really helps me when people keep those sidewalks clear. Um, another thing that can happen is there can be um, dirt or debris or sticks or even like bushes that are overgrown. I know sometimes when the bushes get overgrown you know I'm driving along like this because they're they're in the, the space that I can't go off the sidewalk. Um, 
So when in, when people will trim their bushes, that's extremely helpful, and I definitely notice it and very much appreciate it. Um, and then I think the the other main issue that I've encountered is where the sidewalks have buckled. Um, sometimes I'll try to go off the sidewalk to avoid one of those buckles um, because they make you feel like you're going to tip. Um, and so I will go off the sidewalk and I've gotten stuck. And luckily there are people around that could help pull me out of the mud. But, um, but those buckles definitely are interesting to avoid. Hi, I'm Dr. Cynthia Olson. I'm a family physician and geriatric specialist. I live here in Yellow Springs, and I also volunteer for the Citizen Action Sidewalk Group. I want to talk a little bit about aging and how we change as we age and how that affects our ambulation. First of all, there's two different things that occur that can increase our risk of falls. There's intrinsic problems or changes, and then there's environmental changes. The intrinsic changes have to do with what happens within ourselves. It occurs both as we age and with our own medical problems at any age. Aging uh, is a normal process and shouldn't be considered pathologic or a disease at all. It's just normal. We all do it, and hopefully we'll all get there. But things that do occur with age is we naturally have some changes in our hearing and our vision. We may accept things that uh, we don't like, such as problems with our balance. And at the age of 35, we normally start having uh, a decrease in our muscle strength. Um, I've, you've always heard the joke about getting shorter as you age. And that's true, partly as our joints start to get drier and our cartilage uh, also gets drier, we do tend to lose height. Um, there are some conditions that are more common with age that also decrease hearing, uh, flexibility, our strength, and our hearing. And these are really common, you, you've heard about it, um, cataracts glaucoma, macular degeneration decreases sight. Um, problems with arthritis and, and muscle pain, uh, back pain, those are very common at any age, but tend to be worse as we age. All of that can affect our ambulation. Um, medications can also be an increasing problem, such as high blood pressure medication, arthritis medication, and medication for neurologic conditions. Those might have side effects of uh, dizziness and changing blood pressure. Now, why do I even bring this up? Everything that I just mentioned can increase our risk of being off balance and increase our risk of falls. That's what I mean by both intrinsic um, risk of increasing falls and having um, an uncertainty about our ambulation. Those are the intrinsic problems. Then we turn to environmental problems. Environmental problems are those things that are outside of ourself. We may or may not have control of that. Um, for example, weather. We don't have too much control over the weather, but we do have control over our home environment, such as the lighting, having throw rugs out, having cords that uh, go across the room or throw rugs. There was a recent article I came across in the Journal of the American Medical Association. I still do read those journals, even though I'm not currently in practice. And the recent article that I read showed that over a third of household falls inside can be mitigated by improving the home environment, increasing lighting, getting rid of obstacles, making sure that there are handrails on stairs. That can be a pretty big deal when you're talking about a serious injury, such as a head injury or a broken bone. What about the outdoors? 
That's a little harder to control sometimes. Our yards are uneven, as are playgrounds. But we do have some control over our stairways on our porches by having handrails, making sure there's a good light on when we come home in the evening, um, being aware of our walkways. And speaking of walkways, one of the reasons I am helping out on the sidewalk project is because we do have some issues with our sidewalks. And it tends to be people with disabilities and elderly people that have uh, more problems cleaning their sidewalks and also walking on sidewalks, a real fall hazard. Sidewalks that are uneven, have grass growing, or grass encroaching, or bushes that are encroaching are a fall risk. It's hard to say how much of a fall risk because studies haven't been done. However, it's probably fairly significant. And from what I heard from patients or from just our senior citizens, they have said that it impedes them from going out or it makes their walks less enjoyable and it makes them fearful of going out and walking. I'm gonna bring up the fear of walking. I used to have a lot of folks come into the office and tell me that they were afraid to walk. And one of the exercises I always brought up was, you need to get out and walk more. They would tell me, I don't have a place to walk. And I'm sure you do. We have sidewalks in our community. But if folks are afraid to get out and walk, it's like a self-perpetuating problem. The more you stop and not walk, the weaker you get the more frail your bones get. So walking is probably the best exercise that older folks could be doing to um, mitigate the, their risk of falls. It's kind of like a catch-22. So what I would really encourage my friends and my neighbors to do is, is let's help out. Let's either join the sidewalk campaign Let's make it possible for those neighbors who are less likely to be able to clean their sidewalks, get out there, help out, clean the sidewalks and walkways, be cognizant of what it's like to walk, make sure there's a good 42 inches as possible, and, or at least compatible with that, and start to think about what your other neighbors might be experiencing on their walks. I'm glad you took some time to at least look at this. Think about what you'd like your life to be like as you get older and start to consider um, these challenges for your neighbor. Have a good afternoon and thanks for listening. Um, my name is Tony Dosick. Um, I've lived in Yellow Springs since 1993. Um, I'm a graduate of Antioch College, um, and I am working um, now and have for the last three years as Project Director of Livable, Equitable, Age-Friendly Yellow Springs. It's a bit of a mouthful. In 2019, um, we, this community became an official designated AARP, Age-Friendly Livable Community. That, that was the beginning of what is um, a now a three-year project. We, we basically took off a year uh, during the COVID epidemic. And we're using a structure and a process that was developed by AARP American Association of Retired Persons. And it's been utilized by more than 900 communities in the United States, both large and small, including Columbus, um, Cincinnati, and Dayton is just beginning its process. Clinton County, Oxford, or other communities here in Ohio. The process involves building a, a, a community survey analyzing the results of the survey, and then using that information to build a map, an action plan with a collaborative approach. 
It's work, the work is based on the eight domains of livability that the ARP developed, which are outdoor space and buildings, transportation, housing, social participation, respect and social inclusion, civic part participation and employment, communication and information, and community support and health services. One of the first things I did as project director is I examined um, village um, information and reports to see what the community has done so far. In 2021, we began to build our community survey using a, a, the basic outline of uh, that the ARP has developed and adding a, a, a some special items. I mean, we're yellow friends. We never do anything exactly like everybody else. Um, that would allow us to gain more information about inclusion and equity. We worked with the, um, the uh, statistical and research office at Wright State to build a represent, representative sample um, so that we could get accurate and reliable results. And the survey is different from other surveys that people or information that people might have shared um, with the village or with other communities. Uh, efforts over time is the survey is really about how people feel about living here in Yellow Springs. What's their lived experience? We also conducted listening sessions and did some follow-up interviews with, with individuals. We analyzed the res written results, the, the verbal comments, and they were sorted by frequency. We formed a core team made up of people who have expert knowledge in one or more of the eight domains and who have experience working collaborative. We, the core team, um, worked to develop some action plans and, um, and develop, um, and working with the village and others um, to um, implement those action plans. In the section on outdoor spaces and buildings from community survey, the question was asked about the condition of our sidewalks. Are they in good condition, safe for pedestrians, and accessible for wheelchairs or strollers? The choices were excellent, very good, good, fair, poor. The overwhelming response from all of the um, surveys, and there were 173 of them that were returned, was that our sidewalks or in fair or poor condition. So this is an issue that is um, very, very clear about how village residents feel. And we are pleased to join with others, Barbara Mann, Mitzi Miller, and, and hopefully others and, and the core team um, on, on coming up with some creative solutions to, to um, our sidewalks. Uh, as someone who's going to be 79 this year and loves to walk, this affects me personally. Our sidewalks are a mess. Um, I've been meeting um, with Mitzi Miller, with Barbara Mann, and others to hear their thoughts and ideas as I'm the champion of this project um, uh, in our um, efforts to uh, build an uh, action plan. I've also met with um, Josue Salmoron, our village manager, and with Brian Hausch, president of the council, to outline our action planning process. And I shared with them the results of our community survey, um, particularly around the issue of sidewalks. They also acknowledge that we have a problem. From what I've learned so far, we actually have two somewhat separate issues. Keeping sidewalks clear of debris and plants is one, and reconstructing sidewalks that are damaged and broken is the other. I'm looking forward to exploring how other communities tackle the latter, and we need to um, explore options and work with the village and others to implement um, the best ideas. The second is ongoing maintenance. How can we encourage and support homeowners and property owners to maintain the sidewalks in front of their house or their property. I think some of the, there are creative ways to do this. T 
taken from our knowledge of behavioral science about what motivates people to do the right thing. How do we make this task easy and fun? How do we incentivize making the choice to keep our sidewalks clear? We are a community that cares about each other. How can we use that sense of community of our commitment to our friends and neighbors and helping each other to also keep our sidewalks in good shape. We're, we're looking forward to exploring ideas and coming up with actions. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Donna Haller. I'm a resident of Yellow Springs. I've lived here most of my life. And um, I also work for the Citizens for Action uh, sidewalk group. And I think it's really important that we have good sidewalks. Um, a lot of people um, have wheelchairs and other reasons that they can't walk um, on wet and dangerous sidewalks. But for me, um, 10 years ago I broke my leg and um, it took about four months to get out of the wheelchair and then that next spring the sidewalks um, on my way to school where I worked were really muddy and um, had a lot of debris and I was walking to school as I always did and I slipped and it was pretty scary. Um, another time I was walking with a group of students downtown and on our way back somebody fell and um, injured themselves on a part of the sidewalk that had a lot of leaves that got wet. So I just think it's really important that we have safe sidewalks for everyone. I now have grandchildren here in Yellow Springs. One of them uh, is learning to ride a bike. And now that the sidewalks in our neighborhood are cleared off, he can ride all the way around our block. Um, and it's very safe for him. And my granddaughter is about a year and a half old and she's walking um, and loves to walk on the sidewalks. And I wanna keep them clear for her and for all the citizens in Yellow Springs, as they should be. I'm Chris Bongiorno. I'm a professional urban planner. I've lived in the village for about 10 years now. I've been a planner for 20 years, and for about 10 years of that, I've been an independent consultant specializing in community planning and transportation and mobility. Um, since moving to the village, I've been involved in a number of different committees and uh, community efforts one of which is the Yellow Springs Active Transportation Advisory Committee, and another is our local Safe Routes to Schools efforts. These two things overlap um, with a focus on both active modes and really all modes of transportation in the village and trying to promote a safe, equitable um, transportation network that serves all populations. Um, so with the Active Transportation Advisory Committee, which is a, a voluntary group of uh, representatives from uh, different backgrounds. Some of us are professionals like myself, some are retired professionals, um, others represent different interest groups like uh, the senior community or the schools and uh, school children. Um, others are just uh, residents of the village and have a, a special interest in promoting uh, transportation options for all in the village. So that committee has worked over a number of years to advise the, the village, whether it be council, or the village administration on any number of transportation issues, whether they be programs, policies, um, active uh, capital projects like rebuilding a street or an intersection, um, everything from bike racks to full roadway redesign. We completed an active transportation plan in 2018. It was actually published and approved in 2019, but it involved uh, more than a year of community-wide engagement, uh, a number of uh, community mapping exercises, and public meetings, and it produced a really comprehensive document uh, with a, a series of strategies and uh, projects that could be implemented over a number of years. Um, as the nature of many planning efforts, it's not something where everything will be completed as written, um, but hopefully we and we have used that as a guide over the last five years to inform project development, um, reaching out to community partners and uh, public agency partners for funding working with others to implement programming recommendations. And uh, key pieces of that plan are filling in gaps in the network of active transportation. And when I say active transportation, that's walking, that's biking, that's moving in a wheelchair or using another mobility device, uh, access to transit. Um, it does not ignore the fact that the vehicular, the automobile network is present um, and that it is in fact prominent in many communities, um, but it really focuses on those kind of human-powered elements of the transportation network. 
So some of the key recommendations that came out of that plan were improvements um, to our transportation network that fill in gaps, whether they be sidewalks, trails, um, or address areas of the, of the community where um, the public said, I don't feel safe in this intersection. Whether it's crossing an intersection um, because of the way that the vehicles turn through or the dimensions of the intersection, the way the signal works. Um, so the priorities became addressing those areas that were that had the highest safety concerns. Sometimes it's trial. Um, there was a, a short demonstration project um, in the vicinity of Mills Lawn um, right after that plan was completed. And I think the community took some lessons from that and looked at how can we implement some of these things long term, or maybe they weren't good ideas at all. Um, the Limestone Street project that was completed last year actually came out of the active transportation plan, but also um, this is where the overlap comes in, the safe routes to schools uh, work that we're doing. So I'm going to transition to that here for a moment. The uh, safe routes to schools is a federal program that also has uh, state funding attached to it. Um, so we work with the Ohio Department of Transportation and the Miami Valley Regional Planning Commission, or MVRPC. Um, every school district in, in the state um, is, is eligible to receive funding through the safe routes to school program. Uh, not every community actually follows through and completes a plan to use those dollars. So Yellow Springs has been good at doing that. Um, completed a plan in 2011 that was used to inform and um, submit applications for the project that became the new sidewalks on Yellow Springs, Fairfield Pike, and Winter Street, uh, North Winter Street. And then we completed an update at the same time as we were doing the active transportation plan in 2018. Uh, that plan informed the application for the Limestone Street funding application. So those two plans together, the active transportation plan and the school travel plan, um, were used to successfully apply for and receive funding and implement uh, the Limestone Street sidewalks that were completed last year. Um, other work that we do with uh, Safe Routes to Schools, there's a lot of programming and education. Every spring and fall, uh, a number of uh, partners at the schools and within the community including the police department, uh, Miami Valley, I'm sorry, Miami Township, uh, Fire and Rescue, um, work together to do programming at the schools, um, bike rodeos, safety trainings, uh, helmet giveaways, bike safety checks. Um, and then we coordinate a number of fun activities, including getting uh, groups of people to go from different parts of the village and walk and bike to school together, uh, trying to encourage people to try new behaviors. At the same time, um, recognize that there are improvements that can be made along the way and feedback at the same time. Um, I think that the number of students at our schools that live within two miles is roughly 90 to 95 percent and that two mile distance should be a comfortable distance to walk or bike to school but we're talking about a population that ranges from age six on up to age 18 so there's a lot of different needs within those communities uh, within that community um, and uh, the number of students that actually walk and bike to school uh, on a daily basis, and this varies seasonally, is somewhere in the range of 20 to 25 percent. So we could be doing better to promote an environment uh, where walking and biking is safe and is the most uh, convenient option for, for that population. So a lot of this has to do with the active transportation work, the safe routes to school work. We're really looking to promote a community um, that has uh, safe, convenient, an equitable transportation network that serves all populations. When we have that network that's complete, um, that is convenient, that's well-maintained, it serves all populations. But when it's deficient, it really harms uh, vulnerable users the most. And that's uh, young people, that's seniors, that's people with disabilities, and that's people without access to a personal vehicle. So it is important for us and for these committees that I'm involved with to kind of stay in front of these things and do everything we can to continue to improve these conditions um, along our roadways, sidewalks, and paths. Hi, my name is Aliva Turner. I am the executive director at the Yellow Springs Children's Community Center. Um, just here to give my opinion on making sure or having clear and safe sidewalks um, in the community. At the Children's Center, we do, um, in our school age program, we walk them from Mills Line to our center so it is important that they have a clear path, that there aren't obstructions in their way, um, as well as our younger students 
they take walks through the village. Um, and so just being able to have a clear path, as I said, as well as our double wide strollers. We have our six seaters that um, our infants love to go on walks and they enjoy getting out and um, just being outside and seeing the community. And so just important that they have an area where they are able to have their strollers um, because if there is any, for any reason, if the sidewalks aren't clear or are blocked, then it's not safe for them to have to go into the street or to be able to go through those areas. So that it will be very important for us to just make sure that there are clear paths and sidewalks where we can continue to um, get outside and into the community and enjoy the nice weather. My name is Nick Cunningham. I'm a longtime resident of Yellow Springs. Uh, I use a wheelchair, so whenever I'm in town, I will on the sidewalks a lot. There have been, over the years, some spots that I have been unable to push on when I will. So there have been sidewalks that have been overgrown. Um, there's been some that have been uh, overgrown like trees and branches, so people will hit them in the head when they walk. I've had that happen when people walk with me. They don't have to walk around it. There have been certain occasions on certain sidewalks in town where I can't push on the sidewalk, so I push on the street. Well, people are used to me pushing around, so it's kind of weird that people just get used to the chair and go around me so I don't get horned and honked at all so but just something and I've noticed that like if somebody was walking with a stroller or was a walker or something that they would have trouble with his wheels because they would be hitting the bumps that I hit um I'm pretty much mobile wherever I go so there's no problem with me pushing anywhere but I do see people other people that have trouble with the sidewalks and they don't say anything so if there was somewhere where we could all put in our info to somewhere and everybody gets a chance to say where the sidewalks aren't good or not That'd be a great thing to do, so. Hi, I'm Teresa Mayer. Um, I have lived in this area since 1980, and I um, live right outside town, but I'm in town all the time. And uh, I was asked by Mitzi to talk about what it's like, um, what the sidewalks are like. Uh, and the reason she asked me is because I uh, broke my neck in 1985 and was um, an incomplete quad and used a wheelchair for quite a while and found out how difficult it was to get around Yellow Springs using the wheelchair. At that time there were no curb cuts anywhere and uh, um, there was a disability committee and we worked with the village and we got curb cuts put in back then. And since then, what I've really uh, noticed that I don't use a wheelchair anymore. I went through using a wheelchair, then a walker, and canes occasionally, still now um, when I'm unsteady. Um, what I've really noticed is that when the sidewalks are uneven, it can be very dangerous um, walking in town. And as I get older, it's even more dangerous because uh, a fall can cause all sorts of problems and I do have periodic falls. I catch my toe um, from my spinal cord injury. I have a drop. So it's very easy to catch your toe on an uneven sidewalk where the two pieces don't come together or where it's broken up. Um, so uh, uh, I guess uh, what I'm talk asking the village, even the village um, council to do is to allocate enough money in their budget each year to repair sidewalks and keep them usable for everybody in town. What I found is most people don't think about it because uh, they don't realize because they can step over it easily. And most people aren't aware of disability issues 
until they have someone in their family or until they themselves become, become disabled some way or the other, have a disability, lose their vision, um, uh, have a stroke. And unfortunately, this is a, a, a club that we belong to of people with disabilities that most people don't want to belong to. But the older you get, the more likely you're going to join our club. And uh, you can, um, and then that, that's when people usually realize how unaccessible this town is. And for a town that puts out the message to everyone that we accept everybody and that we want everyone to be active members of this town, um, a lot of people can't be just because they can't get around the town. Um, when there's um, uh, dirt, uh, sticks, rocks, and things on the sidewalk, it makes it dangerous for people using walkers and canes, people with vision impairments, to get around the town. So um, just as a citizen, I encourage the homeowners to try to keep their sidewalks clean, keep brush pulled back. I have several friends that are vision impaired and they get hit in the face by branches often as they're walking into town. And, um, and I encourage the village to put enough money in their budget to take care of the long list of repairs that they have to do already. And if you know of a sidewalk that needs to repair, let village council know. If you're a senior and you no longer can take care of your sidewalks, our volunteer group is more than happy to help you. My number is 937-767-1656. If you need a helping hand, uh, we're there for you. And uh, we're there for those residents of Yellow Springs and trying to make it safer. Thank you.